Opening yourself up to scrutiny and to peer review, what it does is it allows your knowledge, it allows the truth to be tested. It withstands the test of scrutiny and the things that withstand is the truth. And that's literally, this comes from the ancient wisdom of knowing what the truth was, which they likened, the, they essentially likened the truth to a tree, which literally is, is etymologically linked. It shares etymological origins, the same root word of Drew, which Drew was is the root word of Druid, and it comes all the way from Proto-Indo-European root, um, which I, I believe was Druva, um, the same root word of the Vedas in Hindu which I forget it off the top of my head, but it's the root word of, of, the, of the truth because the truth is literally is the root. It is the foundation. They consider that the truth was literally in etymological origins. It was meaning steadfast, that which holds strong, firm, solid foundation. So we are talking about in the biblical reference, your built your house built upon a foundation of stone, which will stand the test of time, which goes back to the ancient builders, the ancient advanced high civilization of advanced mathematics and also advanced um, human physiology where they built the pyramids a they built megalithic foundational stone structures encoded with the truth which would withstand the test of time and have withstood countless world global cataclysms such as massive earthquakes such as massive comet impacts such as massive of floods and all of these seismic events and seismic activity, these <clears throat> structures are built on a foundation of truth, on a foundation of stone, as opposed to your house of cards being built upon the sand, where the big bad wolf, anybody can come along and huff and puff and your whole structure, your whole foundation of reality comes gets blown asunder. Because it was built on a pile of BS. Which is the very meaning of why the hierarchy of evidence is a pyramidal structure. It is built upon a foundation of, of solidity. And as you progress higher and higher, it's like running through the gauntlet. What, what emerges out the other side is the most distilled purest form of truth that we can possibly come to and you know so that's the closest to the universal truth the underlying foundational truth of reality that we can get to and you know well we will i who knows i don't think we can ever be perfect but it is the process of scrutiny and of filtration of of the information that allows us to get the closest that we possibly can. That's why these studies are the highest quality. And that is why opening yourself up to criticism and to scrutiny only makes you harder. It strengthens you. It makes you stronger. It makes you more firm and solid in your foundation of truth. Just as the ancient druids and the ancient wisdom of the tree, the of the wise dome of the wisdom of the wise tree, of the wizard, of the wizard. The knowledge of the foundational truth of the underlying structure of reality where the, the tree is is stead, stands fast, it stands firm, it stands strong, and it stands solid as the root is the, tr is the truth, the foundation, the source, the origin. 
because obviously, again, as Drew literally means fixed, and literally Druid literally meaning one who is fixed in knowledge. And so, of course, fi fixation allows us to remain strong and steadfast. However, the true strength comes from, again, the perfect balance between flexibility and rigidity. That perfect, go it's a perfect golden mean where it has to remain slightly more rigid than flexible or vice versa because being too rigid or in other words too brittle too fixed will allow will cause your structure to crumble whereas being flexible is what allows the tree to bend before it breaks and the more flexible it can be the more strength that it will have whereas you can't be too flexible or you won't have any rigidity and you won't be able to stand firm so it has to be a perfect happy medium a perfect golden mean ratio between flexibility and rigidity and this applies obviously of course to the mind where you cannot remain too fixed or rigid you have to remain flexible and being able to bend and to absorb the shock to be able to withstand the true test the true testament of time just as all structures remain have to remain flexible which is what the ancient which is what made these ancient stone structures so powerful and which is why why our modern Modern architecture now has to incorporate massive flexibility to incorporate for wind damage as well as seismic activity just as the tree has always done has always remained flexible and able to bend with under the weight of the wind or under the weight of seismic activity which allows it to remain standing throughout the testament of time just as our bones cannot be too brittle which is the balance between calcium and magnesium whereas the magnesium is actually what makes the bones what gives them their their strength by the means of flexibility and the more flexible the bones are the more um, the less prone they are to breaking whereas too much calcium will actually calcify the bones make them brittle and that's what actually causes fractures and breaks whereas the magnesium provides flexibility so it's again that happy golden medium between the two it's that the twin pillars once again the twin pillars which provide true strength human body expresses the symbol of the world pillar of the world axis the esoteric depictions of the tree of life, again, as I've covered in the previous series, being the tree of life is the human genetics, being the microcosm of the macrocosm. The human body being the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And again, the, the triumvirate section, the triune brain of the base, the midsection and the vault or, or the cerebrum which again is the tripartite of the problem, reaction, solution. All sun and stars and the mountains and rivers, the good men, the bad men, and the animals and the insects and the whole bit. The base being the reptilian comp the R complex, being the fight or flight response, the survival, which is the unconscious nature. It is the abyss. It is the base, the abysmal. And then the emotional complex, the mammalian complex, refers to the emotions, or in other words, the subconscious, the reaction, what gets us to respond to the problem. First, there is a problem. The emotional response is how we respond to that problem and then we have the highest portion of the brain, which is the functional, the rationing, the reasoning, and the logic, which is the which com comes up with the solutions to the problem and the reaction to that problem. And thus we have the solution, the problem, reaction, solution. So we have the base, the abyss, the subconscious, the unconscious, the depths, the black of the abyss, the deep, the deep subconscious nature. Then we have the emotional complex. We have the we have the conscious mind. And then we have the super conscious mind, which transcends rational thinking and which is inherent knowing, the the source of all knowledge, the source of knowing. And again, as I showed earlier, how this also plays out and corresponds directly to the to the human physiology, to the body at large, being the root of the or the base of the spine. 
the root of the spine being the abyss, the depths, with the heart center, the heart chakra level being at the subconscious, being the emotional level, and then the crown being the illumination, the crown being the conscious or the super conscious, the capstone. So again, how this trinity plays out through every aspect of creation, from the physiology to the psychology to the theology and the mythology to the anatomy as well. So again, this is the pattern, this is the pater, the pattern of nature and the pattern of creation. And the pattern of structure, which again gives rise to the world pillar or the cosmic pillar, which in the human body is we see again as the image of the tree. And again, the tree is the trinity layers, the depths, the roots, or the root, or the abyss, the bottom, the base, and then the trunk being the support structure, the pillar, canopy being the branches, the illumination, the light. So you have the dark, the depths, the abyss, the underworld, ascending up into the heavens towards the light, from darkness into light, as all of nature and all of life goes. So as I briefly touched upon the tree of life and the tree of knowledge in the previous presentation of the series, again I will touch upon and expand a little bit further here as the tree of knowledge being the tree of your mind, the tree of your brain, the tree of your central nervous system. And this corresponds and correlates to the larger fractal portion, which is the tree of all of life in existence, the phylogenetic tree of life which encompasses all of living organisms, even ones without a central nervous system or without the central centralized tree of life within their own body, such as the human organism, which again, it's the central tree of life within the, within the body, is your central nervous system. The dendritic patterns, which a dendrite comes from the root of pertaining to a tree, and the reason for this dendritic pattern of all of nature is that all of nature in this electric universe is dendritic, meaning it follows the tree pattern. It is electric. And so this force that creates this uh, standing wave formation or this basically this bi bowl, this dual toroidal dynamic um, that is found throughout all of nature. And of course, it only occurs around electrical filaments, which run on a universal scale generated in plasma by electricity these electromagnetic effects either they tighten it constricts and it, it coils which is the essence of the the hindu meaning of kundal meaning constriction meaning strangling or coiling again as i covered in symbols of power part two and part three is the very meaning of the perineal muscles of the anal sphincter of the per perineal muscles literally means is a constricting a contracting a constriction it, which is an electric force of charge which is it creates strength it's a force of electromagnetism that creates charge which creates force and and power which is it creates contraction which is how all of biology functions um electrical biology functions through musculature is through the constriction and the contraction which generates power so the greater electric force the greater electric charge the greater constricting power the greater implosive force can be generated 
The plasma Z pinches are of special interest to the electric universe theory, especially those with the natural result of pairs of Birkeland currents interacting with themselves. In other words, these sine wave, these sine standing wave, the standing motion waves. And of course, this is the structure that creates the entire um, physiology of the human brain. It's the structure that creates so many forces um, also throughout nature. It's literally the hyperboloid, which as we covered back in the previous films, we covered the various aspects of the toroidal dynamic of the brain and we'll cover this much deeper in future films as well but so this is the toroid the very heart the very core of the of the toroid itself is the z pinch is the hyperboloid it's literally the holy grail as literally depicted in uh steven spielberg's raiders of the lost ark indiana jones the correct the correct holy grail was the one with the z pinch which is the very same shape as the ro it's of the rocket fuel the rocket nozzle which is the very same essence that creates the chroma the x chromosome is because it is literally the torso the torso the torsos which is literally the vortex mathematics the spiral stalk of the human torso of the torso which torso in itself literally comes from the, an anagram of torus of toros and which itself is just from the root word of torsion because the torso is is what allows us to twist and it is the element of twisting which is where we get the word torque from which is the root word of the torus which is the root word of torsion because it's a tor everything is made up of electromagnetic torsion fields <laughs> or levitating counter-rotating force simultaneously creating this flux field of the diamonds and how it's exactly correspondent with the vertebrae that literally creates the structure of the human spine and the human rib cage. And this is why the torso is literally comprised of the vortex mathematics of the torsion field magnetic energy of the phi ratio torsion field which is literally what the human torso is the torsion. And of course the synonym of the torso is is also called known as a trunk and of course this is the trunk of the tree of life and the tree of knowledge which is the CNS the central nervous system which are the two trees in the garden of eden the tree of life which is the the tree of knowledge the uh, the central nervous tree and the tree of life which is the the torso uh, the torsion and the cardiovascular system, the cardiovascular tree. Picked it in the sacred womb, which is the spiral, the vortex creates the, is what creates the umbilical cord. It's literally a spiral cavitating vortex which implodes into the stomach of the child as it does within the womb of the mother, as above, so below. And this is what nourishes, and it's the fruit. The child is the fruit of the tree of knowledge. It's the fruit of our labor. It's the fruit of the tree of knowledge, coming to know each other, and it's produced the fruit of life. So this is the coming to fruition, literally, of the sacred process of the Hieros Gamma. And uh, this is a compilation I produced over here, depicting, as you can literally see, the vascular tree of life within the human anatomy, the placenta, literally the dendritic forms of the pattern of biology. And so, again, the implosive physics of the human anatomy, 
We find it in the human torso, as I've depicted here. And the human torso is literally the essence of the torus, the torso, which literally produces the, the Greek letter phi, and showing the implosive uh, cavitation physics of the human anatomy. And um, this again creates um, the biophysics of the human beauty and form. So the body is the temple. It's not a graveyard. This gets us into how we actually influence our genetics to, you know, our healthy lifestyle, how we actually produce the healthiest offspring that we can to produce, you know, basically a divine human being, the most close, the most math mathematically per perfected human being that we can, which brings us closer to the physics of nature, which brings us closer to the essence of God, as we could consider it. And I want to show this clip from one of my friends on YouTube, Karen McCarthy. She's absolutely brilliant, and I want to um, show this clip of what she's going to talk about, how our um, basic, um, our relation to the plants of nature, the, the tree of life, our relation to fruits of the tree of life, why we are intrinsically um, fruitarian. Not exclusively fruitarian, but we have evolved for over 20 million years, if you want to um, consider, you know, the actual anthropological essence of evolution as being legitimate or not, but how we evolve from, you know, most of all primates are strictly plant-based. Um, most of them are fruitarians for over 20 million years, but that's what we evolve from. So that's why we're intrinsically um, the fruits of the tree of life. You know, the human body is literally uh, evolves from the plants in nature, from the tree itself. We are literally the fruits of the tree of life. I actually wanted to put this back, and this is why we say the fruit the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, of course, because it's from the tree of life. But, you know, the child is the fruit of the lady. So let's uh, see what she has to say about that. Turn me around. What would change? Tony Wright has a theory that I think is as important as Darwin's origin of species. It advances the idea that it was fruit and not meat that gave human beings our unique style of intelligence. And he also posits the revolutionary idea that our relationship with plants has in some sense been a sexual one. That we haven't just evolved alongside them the way animals usually do in symbiosis with their food source, but that the chemistry of fruit has had an unusually active role in changing our species dramatically. There was a period of time in our history when all of a sudden the brains of our ancestors tripled in size very quickly and the modern neocortex came into existence with a bang and Tony suggests that this coincided with our ancestors living in the tropical rainforest at the time when they had access to fruit all year round and were eating more fruit by weight than any other animal. Now a lot of animals eat fruit, but not in the quantities that we did. The larger herbivores, for instance, tend towards green leaves, and amongst primates, we do see that trend reflected that the ones who eat more fruit are smarter, whereas those who eat more leaves are bigger and stronger, but less intelligent. So here already we have a very basic clue that if our fruit eating habits were unique and our intelligence appears to be unique, Perhaps the two are related, because for those who say it was meat that made the human brain grow big, I always wonder why hasn't it had the same effect on other animals that eat meat? In fact, the fossil record shows that since leaving the rainforest, our brains have been shrinking fairly steadily, and this may have been a result of not having access to the same quantity of fruit and relying instead on things like meat and root vegetables that are clearly not optimal since they need to be cooked to be edible. So why is this an almost sexual relationship with fruit then? Well, Tony's theory suggests that one of the key mechanisms by which plants influenced our species dramatically comes from the fact that the fruit of a plant is the equivalent of a mammal's uterus. Fruit is a reproductive organ, and so the hormones it contains are about generating and shaping life. Therefore, if ancient man was eating kilos and kilos of fruit 
fruit every day, if it was the main thing in his diet, then he would be flooding his bloodstream with chemicals that made it a bit like a reproductive environment flowing through his veins. And some of these hormones were triggering hormonal switches on our DNA and changing the way it was read by the body, therefore causing unusually dramatic shifts in our species over a very short period of time. If you want to read more about what these changes were, the increase in brain size, of course, uh, extended juvenility and so on, I'll link to Tony's books below this video. But the point of making this is to say, be part of this research if you can. He Um, so let's get into a brief explanation of epigenetic expression by Dr. Dean Ornish. Most of you guys are probably familiar with uh, the work of uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton um, in uh, epigenetics. Well, Dr. Dean Ornish is actually the guy that first discovered um, the process of epigenetics. Dean Ornish is an actual practicing scientist, um, whereas uh, Bruce Lipton isn't. Um, Bruce is great, I love him, but Dean Ornish is the man. He is, he is one of the only men on Earth to actually um, reverse heart disease, which is the leading cause of death on Earth today. And this guy is, you have to follow Dr. Dean Ornish's work. He's absolutely, I consider him to be the realest, uh, closest thing we have to a real guru, a spiritual guru on Earth today. And I mean that in the scientific sense. Are you spelling uh, it Ornish, O-R-N-I-F-S-H. Um, yeah, he's incredible. His newest book, Undo It, is basically how to reverse most chronic diseases, especially heart disease. One way to change, change our genes is to make new ones, as Craig Venter has so elegantly shown. Another is to change our lifestyles. And what we're learning is how powerful and dynamic these changes can be, that you don't have to wait uh, very long to see the benefits. When you eat healthier, manage stress, exercise, and love more, your brain actually gets more blood flow and more oxygen. But more than that, your brain gets measurably bigger. Things that were thought impossible just a few years ago can actually be measured now. This was uh, uh, figured out by Robin Williams a few years before the rest of us. <laughs> Now, there's some uh, things that you can do to make your brain grow new brain cells. Some of my favorite things like chocolate and tea, blueberries, uh, alcohol in moderation, stress management, and cannabinoids found in marijuana. Um, I'm just the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were we just talking about? Um, and uh, other things that can make it worse, it can cause you to lose brain cells, the usual suspects like saturated fat and sugar, nicotine, opiates, cocaine, too much alcohol, and chronic stress. Your skin gets more blood flow when you change your lifestyle, so you age less quickly, your skin doesn't wrinkle as much, your heart gets more blood flow. We've shown that you can actually reverse heart disease, that these clogged arteries that you see on the upper left after only a year become measurably less clogged. And the cardiac PET scan shown in the lower left, the blue means no blood flow, a year later, orange and white is maximal blood flow. We've shown you may be able to stop or reverse the progression of early prostate cancer, by extension, breast cancer, simply by making these changes. We found that tumor growth in vitro was inhibited 70% in the group that made these changes, whereas only 9% in the comparison group. These differences were highly significant. Even your sexual organs get more blood flow, so you increase sexual potency. Uh, one of the most effective anti-smoking ads was done by the Department of Health Services, showing that uh, nicotine, which constricts your arteries, can cause a heart attack or a stroke, but it also causes impotence. Half of guys who smoke are impotent. How sexy is that? Now, we're about to publish two new studies, one in collaboration with Dr. Elizabeth Blackburn, who won a Lasker Prize a couple of years ago for discovering telomerase. Telomerase is an enzyme that repairs telomeres, which are the ends of your chromosomes that control how long you live, obviously pretty important. And what we showed is that simply in just three months, by making these simple changes, you can actually increase your telomerase, thereby lengthening your telomeres and living longer. And we're also about to publish a study, the first study showing you can change gene expression in men with prostate cancer. This is what's called called a heat map, and the different colors, and along the side on the right are different genes. And we found that over 500 genes were favorably uh, changed, in effect turning on the good genes, the disease-preventing genes, turning off the disease-promoting genes. And so these, these findings, I think, are really very powerful. They're giving many people new hope and new choices, and companies like uh, Navigenics and DNA Direct and 23andMe that are giving you your genetic profiles are getting some people a sense of, gosh, well, what can I do about about it. Well, our genes are not our fate, and if we make these changes, they're a predisposition, but if we make bigger changes than we might have made otherwise, we can actually change how our genes are expressed. Thank you.
So he is, the changes he's referring to are strictly a whole food plant based lifestyle. He, he is now advocating a strictly vegan um, lifestyle, but everything, it's all referring to more plants, less meat, less animal products. That's how you achieve those changes that he's talking about. And his new work is going much deeper. His new studies are involved in how to reverse Alzheimer's disease using a whole food plant based lifestyle. So now we're going to show. I know we're we're running a little bit over time here, but I'm going to keep going until some of these. You're good. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Keep going until All right. Yeah. I'll keep going until something says tells me to stop. Um, but so we're going to cover the. I wanted to cover the law of correspondence. That's what all of this has been leading up to. Um, this is some of the graphics I've shown of how the plants in nature have a direct representation in the human anatomy. The law of correspondence is uh, also referred to as the doctrine of signatures, um, <clears throat> basically stating that herbs resembling various parts of the body have been known um, in ancient times by herbalists the world over to treat ailments or conditions relating to the structures of the human body um, based upon you know how that signature is expressed. Referring to, you know, I'm sure most of you guys have seen tomatoes looking like human lungs, you know, mushrooms looking like ears, you know, celery as the bones, on and on and on. The avocado as the womb, I'm sure you guys have seen those floating around. Well, I've, I've produced a lot of my own unique examples that nobody's have seen before. One of these being the oyster mushroom and the human brain corpus blossom. On the right hand side, we see um, the corona radiata inside the brain which is, again, directly symbolic of the radiations of the mycelial structure, or sorry, not the mycelium, but of the uh, coronal structure of the oyster mushrooms. Again, direct representations of what in ancient times they knew of as um, basically, again, doctrine signatures. Basically, they saw how the signatures could be used to treat certain ailments, which George Frazier in his book, The Golden Bow, referred to this as um, homeopathic magic or sympathetic magic. Basically, which is it's not um, it's not a real science. I consider it a pseudoscience, but I like to utilize it as sort of a supplement to the real science that I like to present. Um, I don't use that as I don't refer to that as being legitimate in and of itself because you know there's people who think that like eating brains will you know give you a bigger brain all that. Uh, this is for the people that actually have brains. You know, uh, if you eat sentient animals, you will have sentience. Those that don't eat sentient animals lack sentience. That's a pretty uh, good uh, heuristic to, uh, to uh, realize. What? Um, I'd I love to hear your comments on that in, in the section down below, so that way I can go through and read some of what you have to say about it. If this is the type of content that interests you, make sure to check out my full presentations, as well as my further research, my further films, and my previous videos that you can find in the full archives at patreon.com slash lifting the veil. The link will be in the description below, and all my cited source links will be in that article description as well. And I'm sorry I didn't want to make this too long. I wanted to make this a short video. And as always, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch my videos. Um, if you enjoy this information, please uh, share it around with anyone who you think might also appreciate the information. It's my greatest passion and my purpose and my mission is to continue to produce genuinely inspired and meaningful, uplifting content, intellectual pieces of art. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface of just how much info is is ready and, and waiting to be produced yeah it's i can't even keep up with the amount of output um that, or let alone the amount of writing that is that is coming through uh, we haven't even gotten started yet we are just warming up and so we just need to take care of this business guys um, because as as it stands right now i am not able to do this full time i simply am not making enough to to pay off the amount of effort that goes into these so i i simply i can't practice practically do it right now so um, we have to meet these minimum goals otherwise I can't do this please help me continue in this mission <laughs> and um, check out the merch in the links below help support my channel that way or support my channel on patreon.com slash lifting the veil links in the description below and I will see you guys in the next video so there is so much more content coming up